Some say the best thing you can do financially is pay off your mortgage, but most methods are slow, risky, and end up locking up precious resources along the way. You could give the bank extra money by following the old way of doing things, or you can do exactly what the banks do by legally and ethically rigging the game in your favor. So, do you wanna pay off your mortgage without destroying your quality of life? Is bi-weekly payments, extra payments, shortened terms, or cutting back on costs? Well, those are only gonna create suffering and destroy wealth in the long run. So if you want freedom sooner than later, but don't wanna take risks to get there, pay close attention. Look, banks have the largest buildings in pretty much every city. They have special rooms just for the loads of cash they have as well. I mean, that's pretty impressive, right? I just got a room for my cash. They don't have a product, just a service. The service of selling your money that they're currently renting. Renting for very, very cheap. Last night I was talking to my son, he's like, I don't get how banks make money. And I was like, well, you know how they give you that lollipop? He goes, yeah, I'm like, that's to let you know you're a sucker. Yeah, well, <laughs> what is it that they do? Well, why do they got such big buildings? Uh, what are the rooms up above the lobby? Well, let me break this down into three simple parts for you. One, let's talk about how banks make money and I'll answer my son's question here. If they give you 25 cents for depositing $100 for the year, right, because you're getting a quarter of a percent, and they can turn around and sell that money for $3, that's a pretty good return. So just go look. Go into a bank or a credit union and look and say, what are they paying on their money markets, their certificates of deposit, their savings accounts? And then on the other side of the wall, I'll go, well, what are they charging? What is it for a car loan? What is it for a mortgage? What is it for a signature loan? What is it for a credit card? And what you're gonna see is, they're giving you a measly amount of money and they're marking it up extraordinarily to give to other people. All right, let me, let me use this example of, you know, they're renting your money for 25 cents, right? And they're selling it for $3. Pretty, pretty good markup. I don't even know what is that percentage, you know? Because if, if they're renting it for 25 cents and sell it for 50 cents, that's 100% markup. So they're getting like a thousand percent on that example. Now, let's just say that you are a landlord, right? And you could get a piece of real estate that you had to pay, let's say 250 bucks a month for, but you could turn out, turn around and lend that out or rent that out for $3,000. That's basically what the banks are doing. They're going, here, we'll pay you rent, 25 cents, and then we'll go charge someone else $3. That's crazy. That's not even the whole part of the story. They can lend the money out more than once. There's, you make a deposit into a bank, they can lend that money out, but then someone else gets that money and they put another deposit, so it's called fractionalized banking. They lend dollars more than once, right? It's not like it just stays out of the system, it goes back in the system and there's a little bit of reserve requirement, but it can still continue to be lent. For a bank, are they really in the business for cash flow or accumulation? You know, we've all been taught that it's about accumulation, wait for 30 years, compound interest, slow and steady wins the race, invest early, often and always, you know, scrimp, save, sacrifice, defer, delay. Accumulation is an antiquated game that is destructive. They don't care about accumulation. They don't take your deposits and put it in retirement plans. They take your deposits and create cash flow. So are they rich because of mutual funds? Are they rich because of retirement plans? Absolutely not. They are rich because of cash flow. And let's talk about how they manage and mitigate their risk. When you get a loan from a bank, you know, especially a mortgage, they want a down payment. Because if you don't do enough down payment, there's private mortgage insurance, right? There's private mortgage insurance, and that's if it's less than 80%, right, if, if, or less than 20% down, and you borrowed more than 80%, they wanna charge you an insurance cost in case you default. And if you've ever been through the loan process, talk about due diligence, it's kind of like TMI. I can't believe the number of things they, they wanna know. They wanna know your blood type, they want you know, know how many moles you have. Okay, it's not that bad, but it is your credit, your taxes, your cash flow reporting, how much money you've had in a savings account for a certain period of time. You know, they're looking at so many different things. They're getting appraisals. I did a refinance on my house, required two appraisals, right? They wanna know what kind of collateral you're offering them and you have to pay for the appraisals. So there's so much personal information that they're looking at here. For some loans, it's personal guarantees that say if you default, they can come after your assets or a required amount of deposit at the bank before they'll lend to you. And they do all sorts of things to incentivize you to improve their cash flow. The more you pay them, the shorter the term of your loan, it starts to reduce the risk because you're creating equity with your dollar. Again, they're in the cash flow business. They're charging less for shorter terms because they're saying, hey, shorter term, we have more control of our money, knowing most people are gonna refinance or move anyway. So it increases their return if they shorten the mortgage. They can sell that paper, meaning, have you ever gotten a mortgage and then all of a sudden it was one mortgage company and then it gets, you're, you're paying a different company. That's because they sold the note. They can sell a shorter term note, like a 10 year or 15 year, for more than a 30 year because it's increased cash flow. And again, they're in what game? 
the cash flow game. So the second piece here is be careful not to put yourself at risk because if you lock yourself in with the bank, then you start to put yourself at risk. So think more like the bank. You don't have to wait 30 years to pay off a 30 year mortgage. I know that most people think, oh, 30 years, that's forever, but you can actually pay that off in a year or three years or five years when you have enough cash. But a lot of people try to pay that off by paying the bank extra. And I call that equity gel. Money's now stuck in there where you have to have a good credit or have a good situation and a bad economy might wipe that out. So it might be hard to get access to that cash. And it might be the very time you need it that's hard to get access to. So if you shorten your loan, it will increase your payments. Yet you don't necessarily save interest. Stay with me for a second here. You always pay interest. You always pay interest, whether you pay cash or whether you finance. What does that mean? If you pay cash, you pay interest. Well, the way there's an interest cost is you forfeit the right to earn interest on your money if you pay cash for something. It's obvious that if I borrow money, I have to pay interest to the institution. But if I pay cash, I lose the opportunity to earn money. That's called our cost of money. Cost of money is the highest rate of return or the, that you can earn or the highest rate that you pay for what you borrow. It's basically telling you kind of what your hurdle rate is or what the basic, you know, if you're comparing something, hey, if I could give you a loan at 0% interest, how much do you want? You greedy SOB, you want all of it? Of course. When do you want to pay me back? Never, I'm not going to lend it to you, but no, of course. If you can do better than 0%, why not take as much as you can? That's called arbitrage. You're making more than what you pay. Now, if I'm going to charge you 10%, yeah, that answer changes drastically, right? It might be like, I don't need any of that money unless you have a very short-term loan or a really lucrative business opportunity, right? Or really high interest rate credit cards because it's about your cost of money. What can you earn versus what can you pay? Now, if I can get a loan at 1% and I know I can earn 2%, very certainly, very high guarantee to that, I'm gonna borrow the money. But if I need to borrow at 7% and I only feel really comfortable I can get 5%, maybe I'm better paying that off. But how you pay it off is key. So when you have higher interest rate loans, that's your cost of money. If you have a 23% credit card, your cost of money is every dollar you spend rather than paying that down is costing you 23%. And if you shorten your mortgage, which is a lower interest rate, you're taking money away from paying off that higher interest rate credit card. Be careful because the difference between what you could have paid to the cards versus what goes to the higher payment on the mortgage is actually costing you money. Now, what happens when there's cash flow crunches, pandemics, recessions, job changes, losses. Keep control of your money. I'm gonna say that again. Keep control of your money. Don't put your home and cash at risk. Banks love to lend money to people who don't need it, yet hate, don't wanna give it to people who are in trouble. One argument from comments in my past videos is, man, I paid off my loan and now my finances are exploding. Well, I don't know if they understand cost of money because if those investments were doing so well, they could have paid off their home faster by investing the money and then taking that lump sum and paying it off. But we have to separate two things, method, an objective. Method is about what you're going about doing and how you do it. Objective is whether you want to pay off a mortgage or not. Now I have a cabin that I love. It's as nice or nicer than my home. Paid off, paid off, there's no mortgage. But I have a home with a mortgage, interest only. I'm not gonna stay there forever. Super cheap money. I can guaranteed earn a higher rate with my cash value, cash flow banking policies then I would be paying on that. So that's fine for me, but it's not for everyone. Some people can't sleep at night. They lose peace of mind. They feel frustrated, you know, and they're like, I just got to get this mortgage monkey off my back and then I'm going to feel so much better. I understand peace of mind versus economic sense. Try to have both, but look, it doesn't matter if it makes economic sense and you lose sleep at night because you're your greatest asset, not some stock bond or piece of real estate. And if you can sleep easy by paying off that mortgage, do it, but do it safely. Don't just hand the money over with the method by paying extra or do biweekly payments, which is actually a one full payment more per year, or by shortening your mortgage, therefore locking you into higher payment. You gotta be really careful to make sure that you keep control of your money, that you maximize your tax benefits, that you have security, and then you can pay that off when you have enough cash. Now, if you tell me, you know what? People aren't good, they're not disciplined, they're not gonna save that money on the side. Well, guess what? If you're not disciplined in your train wreck, paying extra that mortgage means you're more likely to lose the home. Because if you're a train wreck financially, when problems happen, you're not gonna have liquidity, you're gonna have debt. You're gonna have all sorts of money on credit cards that are financing that higher house payment. Let's think about that for a minute. That, I kinda get pissed about that because so many people are negative about it and so many people are so emotional when it comes to their mortgage. I just want you to have the intelligence to know what you're doing and then match that to what makes sense for you emotionally. I'm not saying whether you should have a mortgage or not have a mortgage. Hey, in an ideal world, we would never have mortgages. We'd only buy homes with the cash that we've saved up. But that's not how this world's working right now. But we gotta be careful not to be overextended, over leveraged, or unintentionally putting ourselves at risk by paying more or shortening that mortgage. Now, what I find is the higher the emotion, the lower the financial IQ. What about doing an interest-only loan where 
when you pay down extra, it lowers your payment versus an amortized loan that when you pay extra, it doesn't lower your payment. It shortens the term where you're going to pay it off sooner, but it doesn't lower the payment and you still get fixed at a higher payment. And when you're in a, in a, you know, a mortgage that is amortized, you're paying so much interest up front, as you can see on amortization schedules, but we're always paying interest. If I can earn five or pay five, it doesn't matter whether I pay off the mortgage or whether I earn the money. It's a, it's a break even. It matters mentally. Do I feel better paying off the mortgage or having access to cash? That's something only you can answer. There's also interest only variable loans. I'd be careful with those variable loans. There's a thing called velocity banking you'll hear about a lot where people use home equity lines of credit where you can pay it down and you can pull it back up. And what they'll do is they'll just charge everything on a credit card for the month and float that money because they don't have to pay interest if they pay it off in full, take all their paychecks and pay down that line of credit, then pay off the credit cards at the end of the month. The problem is what if the bank lowers your line of credit when you've been paying that down and you're going to pay off your credit cards? Or what if interest rates go up in the future and that's a variable interest rate and maybe you're still in that mortgage? So just be careful about some of those risks, even though I've done other videos and information on velocity banking to kind of help people out. That's something to really understand. Now, when you go shorter than 30 years, in an amortized loan, you're going to create equity gel by the extra money that you've paid, first and foremost, but also because that front end loaded piece of the interest as well. What if you lowered your payment the minimum it could be and saved the difference? Will you always stay in the home? That's a question you really need to ask. What could the cash be doing instead? You know, I'd rather see a loan paid down rather than invest in speculative things like the stock market, no doubt about that. But what if you had something on the side as far as cashflowbanking.com or something like that that gives you options that if there's a cash flow crunch, you can make your payment. You have a lower payment because you have a, a lengthened loan. You know, you maximize some of your tax benefits, which shouldn't be the main reason you do it, but a consideration. I've mentioned bi-weekly bi a couple times. Let me just say, it's a tricky way to get you to pay more frequently. You pay every two weeks rather than pay once a month. But there's 52 weeks in a year. So if you're paying every other week, that's 26 payments. But if we divide 26 into two, that's 13. That's an extra month's payment because you're paying more frequently. Sure, you'll shorten the loan, but you'll also end up with more cash out of your pocket. And that's what people aren't thinking about or always considering. So the considerations I wanna leave you with is, what's your control of cash? What kind of liquidity do you have? What can you earn on your money? What are your tax advantages? If you wanna like get into this deeper, you can go to wealthfactory.com forward slash megakit. I've got a cash flow guide in there. I've got killing sacred cows. I've got what would billionaires do? And here's the deal, it's on me. Exchange your email so we can stay in contact and I can let you know what we're up to. And yes, I'll make offers here and there, but it's gonna really help you build your cash flow and keep your money safe. Now, the final point I wanna make here is what if you just set up your own banking system? What if you stored the money at a place that had guarantees to compete with what you were paying on your mortgage? and then you could actually save that cash. What if you were to earn interest greater or equal to what you were paying in today's low interest rate environment? And plus, what if we look at taxes? What if you had tax advantages and grow the money without tax, get tax deductions on your mortgage interest if you qualify, and create a killer strategy of how to get cash flow from your paid off home in the future? Yeah, it's in the download I already mentioned, but it's overfunded cash value insurance that allows you to be tax deferred with your earnings, but you get to take it out FIFO, which means first dollars in or first dollars out, which means that you don't pay tax on the money that you put in, ability to access cash along the way through loans, which can avoid tax as well, with some benefits. If you become disabled, the premiums will be paid for you if you have waiver or premium, or accelerated benefit riders that say if you ever qualify for long-term care, you can use your death benefit to pay for that rather than your other assets. Even downside protection and asset protection, where liability and bankruptcy, they can't come get this cash, and that once you have interest or earnings, it's guaranteed with the minimum interest rate. Plus, the death benefit can unlock a lazy asset in the future, like a paid off home. You get way more out of it. There's just way more options. If you want to learn more about that, read it inside of the book, What Would Billionaires Do? And I would recommend going to cashflowbanking.com for more. Some say the best thing you can do financially is pay off your mortgage, but most methods are slow, they're risky, and they end up locking up precious resources along the way. Look, you can give the bank extra money by following the old way, or you can do exactly what the banks do by legally and ethically rigging the game in your favor. It's time to get the best interest rates, with the type of loan that fits you. You can pay off the loan with less risk, more benefits, and a lot more control. Now you have the knowledge to transform your thoughts into profits and build the life you love. If you're looking for more on this topic, check out my video on how to start paying off debt. You'll learn the most optimal way to pay off a loan. I'll see you there.